So in this video, we look at how you convert between decimal and 8-bit binary and vice versa. If you haven't already watched our video on base number systems, go back and watch that one first. So let's start with turning decimal into binary numbers. Now there are two main methods you can use to do this. The first is known as the divide by two method and the second, the binary number line method. Both are equally as valid. Use whichever one you feel most comfortable with. So with the divide by two method, we're gonna use a table to illustrate what happens. And we're gonna convert the decimal number 89 into binary. So the first thing we do is we take the number 89 and we divide it by two. What we end up with is 44 and we have one left over. So we write that in the remainder column. We then divide 44 by two and we get 22 with zero left over. It divides neatly by two. 22 divided by two is 11 with zero left over. 11 divided by two is five, this time with one remaining. 5 divided by 2 is 2 with 1 remaining. 2 goes into 2 once with 0 remaining. And finally, 1 divided by 2 is nothing with the whole number 1 remaining. You then simply read the remainder column from bottom to top. So the decimal number 89 in binary is 01011001. You will note I added an extra zero onto the beginning and this isn't strictly needed, but a lot of the times at GCSE, you'll be expected to give your answer in eight bits. And in this case, you can add any leading zeros that you need to pad it out. Now let's look at the binary number line method. We're gonna perform the same thing here. We're going to convert the decimal number 89 into binary. The first thing you'll notice is I've written out a binary waiting line. And we went through these in the previous video on base number systems. You'll notice that every column of the binary waiting line times is by two as we move left. So the rightmost column has a value of one, then two, followed by four, eight, 16, 32, 64, and finally 128. The reason I've gone eight columns here and not say nine or 10 is that most numbers at GCSE will need to be expressed in one byte or eight bits. So we start with the leftmost column, what we call the most significant column. And we ask ourselves the question, how many 128s fit into 89? Well, the answer is zero. 128 doesn't fit into 89 at all. 89 is too small. So we take the whole value 89 and we move over to the next column. The next column has a weighting of 64. So we ask ourselves, how many whole times does 64 fit into 89? Well, the answer is it fits in one whole time. What we have left is 25. So now we move to the next column. How many 32s fit into 25? Well, none, it's too big. So we write a zero and we move on. How many 16s fit into 25? Well, the answer is one 16 fits into 25 and we have nine left over. So we move over. How many eights fit into nine? Well, the answer is eight fits into nine once and we have one left over. So I write a one. How many fours fit into one? Zero. How many twos fit into one? Zero. How many ones fit into one? And the answer of course is one. And we have nothing left over at the end. This will work every single time. And as you can see, we have the same sequence of binary digits representing 89 as we did for the previous method. You can confirm that this is the number 89 by adding up any column that has a one in it. So we have 164 plus 116 plus 18 plus 11, giving us 89. 
The other thing you need to be able to do is convert the binary numbers into decimal. And of course, this is really straightforward if you've understood the binary waiting line method. If you're given one byte or an eight bit binary number like this, just write out your eight columns with the column weightings 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. Now write the binary number from left to right under the columns. Make sure you do this bit accurately. And then just add up any columns that have a 1 in it. So we have a 64 plus a 32 plus a 4 and a 2. So you now know that the binary number 0110 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 is the decimal number 102.